Welcome to Mishnah study Masechet Ta'anit Perek Bet Mishnah Vav. Over here in Mishnah, we're going to discuss the Mishmarot and the Bet Av of each, um, and how they would participate on the uh, on the Ta'aniyot. What would they be allowed to? What would they not be allowed to do? So, if we remember, there are twenty four Mishmarot, right? There are twenty four. Let's call them clans, right? Bigger families that they would divide, right? The Kwanim. So all the, the Dwek family would be this week. The Cohen family would be the next week. The Sit family would be the following week. And they would have, you know, each, now within each one, within each family, right? During the week of the, the, the Dweks, right? This is going to be divided into six different days. And every day, a different, you know, smaller you know, uh, family, sub-family, would uh, work in the Beit HaMikdash, and that would be called the Beit Av. Right? So the 24 Mishmarot, and each Mishmara would be divided into so smaller um, Bate Avot. Now, what would these uh, Mishmarot and the Bate Avot, the Bet Avot, what would they be allowed to, and what would they not be allowed to do? So Shalosh Ta'aniyot HaRishonot, the first three Ta'aniyot, by the way, we see Mahalok between Rabbi Yoshua and Hachamim. So first Rabbi Yoshua's opinion, Shalosh Ta'aniyot HaRishonot, the first three Ta'aniyot, and Shem Mishmar, the people of the Mishmar, right? The the larger family uh, of the the, the, you know, the division of twenty four, they would fast, but they wouldn't finish off the fast. The Bet Av, the Bet, the people of the Bet Av, the people that are working in the Bet Midash that day, they would not fast at all. Shalosh Shniyot, the second group of fastings, right? The, the second group of three, and Shem Mishmar Mitanim Umashlimim. Right, so over here it's a step up. Over here, the Anshe Mishmar have to fast, and they need to complete their fast. The Anshe Bet Av mitani ve'lo mashlimim. The Anshe Bet Av, the people working the Bet Midrash that day, they would start the fast, but they wouldn't finish off the fast. Sheva Achronot, at the last seven, this is the strict, the, the most strict, you know, the strictest of all, most stringent. Elu va'elu mitani ve'lo mashlimim devered Rabbi Yoshua. Both of them, both the Mishmar and the, the Anshe Mishmar and the Anshe Bet Av, need to. Start and complete the fast. This is going to Rabbi Yoshua. Hamim, we'll see Hamim have a one step lower, right, for each. Let's see. Shalosh ta'aniyot arishonot, the first three according to Hamim. Elu ve'elu lo'ayu mitanim. Both of them would not, would you know, that Shem Ishmar and that Shem Betav, right, but even that Shem Ishmar wouldn't fast at all. Shalosh sheniyot, and Shem Ishmar mitanim ve'lo mashlimim, and Shem Betav lo'ayu mitanim. So the second group of three, that Shem Ishmar would start and not finish, but the people working the Beit HaMikdash and Shebet Av, the people working the Beit HaMikdash that day, they wouldn't even start at all. They wouldn't fast at all because they're working in the Beit HaMikdash. And the seven last ones, Sheva Ahronot and Shem Mishmar et Anim Mashlimim, right, the people of the Mishmar would be, would start, would would uh, would would, um, would fast and finish. Ben Shebet Av, those working in the Beit HaMikdash, Mita Anim Velo Mashlimim, they would fast, but they wouldn't complete their fast. And why? Why all this? Why is that Anshe Bab always a step lower? Because that family that's working in the Beit HaMikdash today, we would be Mekel, we would be more leaning on them on this Ta'anit because of the Avodat HaMikdash. Kedesh lo yehalesh kufam. Right? Because we don't want them to come weak when they work in the Beit HaMikdash. We had just one step lower and Halakha is like ha